So today's topic is pressure. It is the application of force. When you apply force on something, it has obviously some impact on it. And we talked about that force can make things move. We talked about how force thing, force can deform things like change their shape. We talked about springs and all that. So it can move things. It can uh, deform things. It can turn them as we talked about in moment of force. So then how much does the force, uh, how much is the force experienced by something depends on pressure. So pressure, the definition is simply that pressure is, and you see the triangle, the triangle means that this is, this formula is the definition. It is force divided by area. So when you have an area on something, the force applied on that area is the pressure. So that's pretty basically what pressure is. One way to remember that is this triangle method, uh, which you can use to solve question that P F over A. So for example, if you want to figure out what pressure is, just hide this and you have F over A left. So that is pressure. If you want to figure out what is A, then hide that, ignore that, and you get F over P. So that is area. Similarly, if you want to figure out what force is, then ignore that and you have P times A left over, which is equal to force. So this triangle method usually helps in identifying a particular quantity from a formula. Okay. So that is pressure is force over area. So it's interesting. My dog just barks a little bit. She's playing with them. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So uh, pressure ka uh, definition aapko samajh aage hoge. Pressure is simply how much force is experienced per unit area. So that simply means that, for example, if I have a block and let's suppose a block is put like this. Now it has some area of the base. So this base has some area and this block has some weight. So that is weight. So now the force experienced by this area is simply W over A. So that is your, uh, what you can call the pressure right now. Now let's suppose I turn this block and I put it like this. Okay. Now the base has changed a little bit. And now this is the new area. So let me call it A2. This was A1. And uh, now the weight is still the same, but now weight is again downwards. So the force is still the same, but now the pressure. So this was original pressure and this is the new pressure. So you can see that because this area is bigger, it has gone up in value compared to this one. The pressure is inversely related to that. Why? Because they are on different levels. Remember that things that are on the same level are directly related and things that are on different levels are inversely related. So we can see that because pressure is force over area and I have increased the area, pressure will go down because it's the opposite relation. Okay. So pressure is force over area. And we can see that if you increase the area of the same thing, that the weight is still the same, the pressure has been reduced. So this tells us what the relation in pressure and area is. Smaller areas experience larger pressure because the force is distributed on a smaller region. So there's higher share of force for that area compared to uh, a larger area where there is a lower share of force. So that is how we know that pressure copy is the force being distributed on area. So if it's a area, then her area, her unit area is more force. It's like distributing that force over that area. So if it's a small area, then it's more force. If it's a small area, then it's more force. Milegi. It's like dividing something in multiple uh, units. So if you make small units, then you will have more areas. Then you will have more force. So the pressure will be reduced. Can you think of a practical application of this? Like where have we seen something like this? So nail board. Yeah, very good. So you have a nail and nail has a very small area. So it has a very narrow base and has a top that is usually broader than that. And it is made broader because you want to apply that force. So when a hammer is struck here, that force is transferred by the hammer onto this area. But because of the narrow edge here, that pressure is really high. So it creates a force here and pushes it in. Okay, so that high pressure pushes this thing in. Uh, Yes. Uh, sir, I'm talking about that thing, which if someone is sitting on the nail board, then there's no pressure to feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So you have a bed of nails, and even though individual nail will, can possibly pierce the skin and all that, but because when a person lies down on a nail, 
bed of nails so you have multiple nails and when you put that person here the weight is distributed upon each of them so the area on which the weight of the person is distributed it is higher so that is why people can easily lie down on bed of nails yeah that is a good uh, application of that stepping on a lego yes uh, that is very painful and that is because your whole weight or partial weight is being uh, put on a very small area especially if that lego has these edges and those edges obviously re further reduce the area so that that's why you experience a much higher pain all right because pressure kafi zyada ho jata yep yep that's right uh, we use pencils uh, for writing right and they have a sharper edge and that is because the sharper is the edge you just have to apply a small force to make a mark over there you don't have to really push it because uski force kafi choti si force bhi kafi hogi to uh because the area is quite high no quite low because it's a narrow opening over there so heels shoes with heels they have a uh, yeah you don't wear heels in soft soil because they will just push it push the heel in and that is because the heel has a very small area and the weight is simply distributed on that which is why it goes in i'm pretty sure i don't have the experience of this but i'm sure that wearing heels will definitely hurt the person doing that uh, especially if it's done for a long time because your pressure is being distributed on a very small area so your weight sorry your weight is being distributed on a very small area so it must be painful to the part of the foot that's in contact with it yeah i have no idea but i can certainly uh, i know that will be painful so like most fashion it is also pointless uh, do you know that heels were actually invented for men so that is what pressure is you have smaller area same force will create a higher pressure and that is how we know what pressure that pressure depends on the area so if you were ever to given to be asked for a graph for this then because they are inversely related you can make it like this that pressure and area will have an inverse graph like this so for a very small value of area like if you go towards this side you have a very small value so pressure is much higher but if you have a large value of area pressure is much lower okay so this is the new pressure uh one way that mc in mcqs they try to trick you is that they give you pressure and you give you one over area instead of giving area they give you one over area and this graph as you can see over here that it will be a straight line why is that because pressure is force over area so if i were to write it like this i can write it as one over area so i can read it in two ways i can say pressure is inversely related to area in which case my graph will be like this pressure and area like this or i can also read the same formula like this pressure is directly related to one over area whatever that is so in this case i will have one over area here and pressure here so that is something that examiner sometimes tricks you with ke wo aapko one over area ka graph dega and because you remember ke area or pressure directly inversely related hote hain to aap ye wala graph pick karoge which is actually wrong because the value is not area it is one over area okay so remember this thing when you are talking about it okay so that's what pressure is you apply the same force you have a larger area aapka for example if you're usually it is recommended that if you're cooking or if you're using a knife always use a sharp knife and that is because sharp knife compared to a dull knife will have a a, a sharper edge and that means that it will cut things with a much smaller force and it will be faster or better for use so there is a lower chance of injury apparently because of that kyunki wo slide nahi karna padta zor nahi lagana padta and all that theek hai so that is what pressure is now how does pressure compare to so how does pressure compare to uh, solids applies in liquids so let's see in liquids what's happening you have uh, so you have this column of liquid let's say so there is this tank in here and i have some liquid in there theek hai so ye liquid hai and this liquid obviously has some weight of itself so iska koi weight hai aur wo weight obviously downwards hoga and there is this area on which this weight is being applied so this area all of this so weight over area now here's the thing i can call weight we have already talked about it the weight is 
mass into gravitational acceleration. So this is mass into gravitational acceleration. Now, here's a weird way of looking at what area is. Uh, the area of this column of water is simply the height of the column of water. Uh, so volume kya hota hai? Volume is area times height. So I can say that area is volume over height. Right? I can say that. Which means because in liquids it's more difficult to calculate the area compared to volume. Hum unko easily so I can say that my area here is mg over v over h. And that simply means that this is going to be mg uh, h over v, right? So this is my new formula for pressure, right? M over MGH, because this is height, this is going to go up there. And now here's another thing. For liquids, we usually have a name for this term, M over V. Does anybody recall what that is? M over V, density, yes. So I can say that for liquids, it's going to be density, which I'm going to write with this weird P. We call it rho, R-H-O. So that is this thing. Rho is, uh, depending on which concept you're studying in, this case, it is density. In the case of electricity, it will be resistivity. So it changes depending on what you're talking about. So the formula now becomes pressure is rho GH. I will prefer this formula over this formula, F over A. Why? Because in liquids, it's very difficult for me to calculate the weight of the liquid that I'm trying to figure out. Also, the area of the base will possibly hard to figure out compared to thus just knowing Rho, rho is the density of the liquid, which we can easily measure. H, which is also the depth, which I can easily measure. And G, which is uh, gravitational acceleration. And that value is also available. So just because it's simpler to use this formula, instead of P is equal to F over A, for liquids, we prefer this. And it also applies to uh, columns of gases as well, because gases also have densities. So instead of saying, F over A, I'll write rho GH. Now, interestingly, this can also be applied to solids because solids also have density, but in solids, it's much easier to calculate or measure their force and area, which is why we try not to go over there. We try to just consider that rho GH, hum liquids or fluids ke use kar lete or F over A, hum solids. Ke kar sakte but interestingly, they're both the same thing and you can use either of them to calculate whatever uh, solid liquid or gas you have. Okay. Achha, a few interesting insights from this. Number one, uh, it doesn't matter what the area of the liquid column is because only the height matters. See, for liquids, only the height, the density, and G. These three things matter. So that means that it doesn't matter how shape is. If you have a straight column, hai, compared to a weird column like this, a weird one that has this shape. But if the liquid is on the same level in both of them, then the pressure here and the pressure here, they're going to be the same. Which simply brings us to one idea that pressure is same at same level in fluids, okay? So if you have the same level, the pressure is same. And doesn't apply just to liquids, it applies to fluids as well. And this is the idea which allowed people to construct different instruments to measure the pressure. So the first instrument that we're going to talk about is a barometer. How does a barometer work? So here's the thing. So people who were working on this, I don't remember, I think it would be Pascal or somebody uh, because they have worked a lot in these uh, fluids and all that. So I think when they were in inventing barometer, they would have simply looked at the idea that at the same level, uh, you will have the same uh, pressure in liquids. I think that this idea is from Torricelli. So I think that was the person who gave us this idea. So if we were to work with this, then we can say that, all right, if I have the same level, and let's suppose I have this thing, I have a tank that is filled with mercury. Why mercury? Because I'm using something that has a higher density, so I need a lower height. Okay, so higher density and lower height. That's what I mean. Uh, that's what it will happen. So if I were to add water instead of mercury, 
my density will be reduced. So height that I need for the same pressure will be higher. So let's suppose I fill this tank with a liquid, any liquid would do. Uh, a higher density liquid will be easier to work with, a lower density liquid will be a little more difficult to work with. But we have any liquid and we have tank. Ko fill kar diye. Okay, next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to put an empty tube here. So this is an empty tube, I've put it here. So an empty tube put in here. There's a vacuum here, okay? So you know that liquids can flow, right? That's one of the first things that we study about liquids in chemistry or physics even that liquids can flow, right? So here's the thing. We know that there's air here. There's a large column of air that we call atmosphere, which is pushing down on this liquid. So yes, liquid ko push kar hai. So what happens if you push a liquid? It goes to the other side. Ever used a viper? You push a liquid or a pull a liquid and just moves towards the other side where there is no pull, right? So this is what's going to happen here that because air is pushing down on this liquid and there's definitely some opening towards the vacuum, there's nothing pulling, pushing down here. Yahan pe koi force nahi hai. But side on pe hai. So this liquid is going to go up. Okay. So this liquid will simply go up and start filling it in. So right now I had liquid here. Okay. And this, li this liquid will obviously be pushed down. So the level of the liquid will reduce and instead kya hoga ke hamara ye vacuum fill ho jayega. But interestingly, when people did it, they figured out that even though you fill this liquid up in there, it doesn't fill it completely if you have a one meter long tube. So if this was one meter long, it wouldn't fill it completely. For some reason, it only goes up to this level. And that is quite interesting. This level is 76.8 centimeters for mercury. So this is mercury, okay? It doesn't go up. So that is something that people really wrestled with that why is it that even though air is pushing down on it and it is still has a space here. Remember there's space here, liquid is not going. And that is where this idea comes in. Pressure at same level is same in fluids. So pressure over here and pressure over here and pressure over here is the same. So if this was A, this was B, this was C, pressure at A equals the pressure at B, which equals the pressure at C, which means now the liquid cannot go up because usko yahan par utna hi pressure feel ho raha hai jitna bahir feel ho raha hai. So usko jane ki upar zurat nahi hai. Usko utna hi pressure maa pe feel ho raha hai. Wo ja nahi sakta maa pe. It's like pushing down on it exactly the same way as air is pushing down outside as the mercury is pushing down inside. So it turns out this column of mercury, this much, it has the same pressure as the whole pressure of the atmosphere down here. And turns out the pressure of the atmosphere here, which is on the outside, is equal to the pressure inside, which is the pressure of mercury. And how much mercury? 76.8 millimeter uh, centimeters of mercury and this is equal to the atmospheric pressure which we can easily measure as one atm and that is how they invented barometer you took it anywhere you saw how much height it went up to and you just calculated that height and you were like okay pressure outside is the pressure inside they're both the same so now the pressure of this liquid column is the same as the pressure outside due to the air and now they have a new unit. You can also call it 768 millimeters because you just converted it. Or you can also call it uh, 0 0.768 meters of mercury. Sure, whatever unit you're more comfortable with, you can call it that. And this is equal to the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure. Another machine that people invented that, all right, if I can have the pressure of air measured like this, then maybe I can also have the pressure of other machines or other liquids made or fluids measured like this. So what they did was they took a tube, which was instead of having a tank, they had it like this. And this was a U-tube, the first U-tube, okay? And now what they're going to do is that they fill this with mercury. So now it is filled with mercury to a certain level. And why are they using mercury? Because it is the, uh, it has a high density. So now the pressure on this side, A, 
is the pressure on this side B. Why? Because right now it's open from both sides. So pressure over here is the same as pressure over here because pressure at the same level is the same, right? Remember this idea. Pressure at the same level is same. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this side with a chamber filled with some gas. So there's a pressure of gas coming from here. Now this gas is obviously going to push on the mercury here. And now the level is going to change a little. So now what's going to happen is that instead of having this, sorry, the mercury is going to change a little bit and there's going to be some change in the height of the mercury here. So instead of having like this, maybe the mercury goes like this, that the level goes up from one side because there is a pressure of the air there and there's a pressure of the outside. Now, if you look at this one, the idea is still the same. On the left side, you have pressure of gas, right? At this point. And we know that pressure is same at the same level. So draw a line over here. So the pressure on this side A is the same as pressure on this side B. So pressure on A is same as pressure on B. What is applying pressure at A? Just the gas, right? So pressure of gas equals what is applying pressure on B? So there is the air that is press applying the pressure up to this point. And then this much mercury. So this height of mercury. So pressure of air plus pressure of mercury, right? And how much this height? So now we can say that because the pressure is same on same levels, we can easily figure out that, okay, let's suppose this height is equal to uh, 10 centimeters. So I can say that now pressure of gas is equal to pressure of air, which is 76.8 centimeters of mercury, plus the pressure of this much height of mercury, which is 10 centimeters of mercury. So what is the total pressure of gas? It is 86.8 centimeters of mercury. Or in other words, I can say that pressure of gas is 10 centimeters of mercury more than pressure of air, right? So I can easily use the idea that pressure of liquids at same level is the same and comparing the two sides of the manometer or the u-tube to easily figure out what the what the pressure is how much higher or lower it is compared to air now let's suppose let's suppose i have the same u-tube and now i connect it to a different gas and now my level goes like this so now on this side and on this side I have the same idea that pressure is same on the same level. Then what is the pressure at A? I know that this is equal to pressure at, a, at B, sorry. And pressure at A is simply the pressure of gas. And pressure of B, oh, sorry, pressure at A is simply the pressure of gas plus the pressure of mercury, right? On the left side. And on the right side, I have just the pressure of air. So now I can say that, all right, if this was, let's suppose three centimeters, then I can say that three centimeters of mercury plus the pressure of gas, which I do not know, is same as the pressure of air, which is 76.8 centimeters of mercury. So now I can say that pressure of gas is 73.8 centimeters of mercury. Or I can say that pressure of air is three centimeters of mercury more than the pressure of gas. Or I can say the pressure of gas is three centimeters less than the pressure of air. So now we can easily compare that it's basically the delta, the difference in the height on two levels, which tells us about how much difference there is between the pressure of gas and the pressure of air. Okay, so that is how a manometer or a barometer works. The idea that pressure at same level is the same for different liquids. So that's a simple barometer or a manometer Obviously nowadays we use, uh, I think uh, MEMS barometers, uh, electrical. Uh, we also use sphygmo manometers, uh, which are used for uh, checking blood pressure and all that. Now, same pressure can be interpreted in multiple units. So judging from the uh, definition, pressure is force over area. So force unit is Newton's, and area is meter squared. So I can say that pressure is Newton per meter squared. So one Newton force applied on an area of one meter squared is same as one Pascal 
of pressure. Okay. Then this thing can also be used in other units. So there's also the idea of atmospheric unit. So one atmospheric unit is same as 76.8 centimeters of mercury, which is same as 768 millimeters of mercury, right? So usually in your books or uh, in your exam, they use the millimeters of mercury or centimeters of mercury. Either of those are the same. You can simply con con convert them. And this is equal to roughly 10 power five pascals. So one atmospheric pressure is 100,000 pascals, 100,000 pascals. Okay, so you can also have the idea of kilopascals or just pascals or 100,000. Yeah, eight lakh pascal, ek atm ke parabar hote hain. So you have multiple units, but all of them mean the same thing. There's also the unit of bar uh, that we use in when we are studying uh, weather or weather conditions and the geography or altitudes. We use bars, ko use karte hai, meters, ko use karte hai, hum unko feet. Ko bhi use kar sakte Malab, aap sakte ho ke, for example, uh, sea level is zero feet. So Lahore is at 700 feet. So that means the pressure at air, pressure of air at sea level is 700 feet more than that at in Lahore. Okay? So you can use that as well. Okay. So feet or meter. For example, when we say that Everest is this many meters high. So what is the height of Everest, by the way? meters Yeah, it is 8.85 kilometers. So that means the pressure at sea level is 8.85 kilometers more than uh, that at air, uh, at the Everest. So how low the pressure would be at Mount Everest. It will be 8.85 kilometers of air less than the pressure at sea level. Okay. So you can easily compare the air pressure. If you go up in height, the air column will be less. Uh, uh, and that will be equal to the drop of pressure of air over there. Okay. So you can also consider the height of cert a certain thing from sea level as a way of knowing the reduction in pressure. Okay. So any other questions on pressure? I think we have studied the chapter. The idea, all the ideas you need to know, will come to you. Some things, uh, for example, applications of uh, this idea. So there is the straw. You use a straw. How do you use it? Uh, straw has uh, this. Uh, so this is a simple straw. This is a simple straw. It's simply a tube, right? And let's suppose uh, you take the air out. So this straw, I'm going to put it in a simple drink. So this is your drink and this straw and somebody takes the, obviously right now this straw is filled to this level, maybe. Now suddenly what happens is that there's air here and there's air here. So the pressure over here is the same as the pressure over here. So the liquid stays like that. And suddenly somebody sucks on this straw, pulls the air out. And now there's no air here. So now the pressure here is high and pressure here is low. So the liquid is going to flow into the straw. And as you keep on pulling the liquid out, the pressure keeps on reducing. The liquid keeps on flowing into the straw. Okay. Similarly, we have the idea of hydraulic press. In hydraulic press, what we use is that we have a large area on one side and a small area on the other side. Okay. Achha. Interestingly, pressure can be translated or transferred from one point to another. So there's a pressure here because it's the same liquid and the pressure at same level is the same. So jitna pressure yahan par hoga, utna pressure yahan pe bhi hoga. So let's suppose this is point A and this is point B. So the pressure here, pressure at A should equal pressure at B. So let's suppose somebody applies a small force here. So somebody pushes down on this lever. So there's a lever here and somebody's pulling down on it, pushing down on it and there's a lever here. Okay. So what happens? Somebody pushes down here and there's a small area. So force, which is, I'm calling it small force at A and compared to small area at A should equal the force at B, which we do not know, but area at B, which is also big. So because area of B is big and you want to maintain the pressure, 
देन फोर्स एट बी शुड ऑल्सो बी बिगर ठीक है जिसकी वजह से क्या होता है द होल फोर्स दैट दिस थिंग अप्लाइज इज मच बिगर देन द होल फोर्स दैट आर अप्लाई ओवर देर सो बिकॉज प्रेशर इज द सेम ऑन बोथ साइड फोर्स वहां पर जो लग रही है वो बहुत बढ़ जाती है सो यू कैन इजिली पुश डाउन एट दिस लीवर एंड यूजिंग हाइड्रोलिक ब्रेक यू कैन स्टॉप द होल कार वाई बिकॉज द ब्रेक पेडल दैट ऑन विच यू आर प्रेसिंग डाउन विद योर फुट इज मच स्मॉलर इट हैज स्मॉल एरिया स्मॉल फोर्स बट बिकॉज इट्स कनेक्टेड टू अ लिक्विड द लिक्विड ट्रांसफर्स दैट प्रेशर और प्रेशर दूसरी साइड पे जहां पे एरिया बहुत बड़ा है वहां पे प्रेशर सेम होना चाहिए तो फोर्स बहुत ज्यादा लगती है गाड़ी रुक जाती है यू कैन इजिली यूज इट टू रेस थिंग्स टू अटन हाइट आप एक छोटे से लीवर से फोर्स अप्लाई करते हो तो पूरी गाड़ी को या पूरे जो भी चीज आपने उठानी है उसको उठा लेता है हाइड्रोलिक प्रेस द आइडिया सिंपली दैट प्रेशर एट सेम लेवल इज द सेम फॉर फ्लूड्स ओके वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक अबाउट गैस प्रेशर गैसेस हैव द आइडिया गैसेस ओबे बॉयल्स लॉ सो बॉयल्स लॉ वाज सिंपली दैट प्रेशर इज इनवर्सली रिलेटेड टू वॉल्यूम इफ टेंपरेचर इज कांस्टेंट सो इफ यू डोंट चेंज द टेंपरेचर then things have the same kinetic energy you reduce them to a smaller volume they will collide more pressure will be higher so in gases usually pressure is simply how uh, it is the sum of collisions or the force applied is based on the collisions that those gas particles have with the cylinders so that is boyle's law just need to recall that so that's the idea of pressure